Hey. New chain? <sighs> Look, Trek Slash. I know that you're all new, but it's not me, it's you. You're a 170 millimeter travel 29er. I just think we have different goals in mind. A 468 reach on a size ML? I'm five foot nine. An ML, is that even a size? But you say there's more to you than just numbers and spec sheets, huh? huh. You've got a steeper seat angle, slacker head angle. I mean, I do like the sound of in-frame storage and an integrated toolkit. They do say a mind is like a parachute. The all new Trek Slash has been leaked on the vital forums for some time and received a few lackluster replies from our community. The mass air crowd may want to take a second look. Our first glance at the Slash's stats had vital testers feeling like this big rig may need a spinner knob on the handlebars to handle switchbacks and only the biggest of descents would be worth riding. Underbike. After all, isn't underbiking the craze these days? And with so many good bikes out there that can do so much, what's the point of the Trek Slash outside the EWS tape? This is where things took a hard left turn. The new Slash isn't a good bike. It's a great bike. The new Trek Slash accesses all of the current trends in aggressive design and even pushes things with five size offerings. Within the standard small to large range is an ML size for riders on the cusp of medium and large or those who just want a longer bike. With the Slash being ridden by multiple testers, this is where we landed. By the numbers, here's the breakdown of our ML Slash. Seat angle, 75.6 degrees. Head angle, 64.1. Reach, 469 millimeters. Chainstay, 435. Seat tube length, 435. A 35 millimeter stem and 150 millimeter Bontrager dropper rounded out the fit department. In testing the latest Remedy and Rail, Vital testers have had a tumultuous relationship with the reactive through shaft system spec. Quite honestly, in both cases, a production shock would have been preferred. The Slash does still have a through shaft, but gone is the reactive valving and the curiously small piggyback is now full sized. The shock itself is still custom and exclusive to the Slash, featuring a three position compression adjustment and relocated climb switch. Plus is for flow trails, minus is for the steep rocky bits, and zero for all points between. We set it for 30% sag and started off with the compression in the center position. Only slightly less leaked than the Slash was the Zeb, which graces this bike with its muscly presence. Setup was just under 70 pounds for our 170 pound testers. High speed compression was wide open with six clicks of low speed. A quick trim of the bars and we were off to the trails. The Slash was shuttled to trail four, the same rowdy descent used in our e-bike tests. Next was the bike park for laps on laps. In both scenarios, both testers immediately loved the Slash. For such a large bike, it was fast on its feet, and eager to maneuver and pop down the trail. Throwing the Slash into corners is great fun. Just lean harder and it seemingly never loses composure. Smaller tables and jumps are easily popped with much better feedback than any bike this size should deliver. Cool story, but what about in the real world? For many riders, at least half of our rides are on average to maybe slightly mundane trails. Do you really want to haul a pig up the hill just to force it to carry speed back down? This is where the Slash actually impressed us. I took the Slash on a local 13 mile ride that grew to 15 miles with all the exploring I was keen to do. Trek has created a big bike that cruises uphill. We're gonna get up into some techie climb here in just a sec. Got the shock completely open. Using the climb switch makes the rear end much stiffer and will probably be reserved for fire roads only. And still pedals really well. In comparing GPS data from the same ride a week prior, I was faster uphill on the Slash than on a smaller Travel 29er. That would actually be our chief complaint in this department, the gearing. Someone put a 30 tooth, that's three zero chain ring on this bike and made it to a 52 tooth Eagle cassette. This combination is indefensibly useless and impractical. I tried as hard as I could to find some sort of hill to make use of, but I just couldn't. 
All of our testers, any time that the trail was flat or even slightly descending, were slapping through gears far too quickly. A rider is gonna wanna throw a 32 tooth chain ring on this thing before you even leave the shop. During the trip back to the truck, the Trek seemed to have an auto-adjusting morphing quality to it. Nuke as fast as you can into that corner and lay it down. Traction and composure until the sun sets. Small bump over there, pop and fly. Roots and nastiness, nom nom nom, slash eat it up. I was literally laughing out loud to myself with utter delight. The slash was that impressive. Earlier this year, Trek introduced its in-frame storage system as well as integrated tool system. Now, the in-frame storage we found easy and convenient to use. We're huge fans of this. The side loader bottle cage also works fantastic. The bits, however, was not without its foibles. After our first few days of testing, the headset did come loose and we had to get underneath to tighten it. So the headset is actually opposite thread. You use a T25 and it's lefty tighty. As for the tool itself, the bolts that hold it together came loose and we had to use tools to tighten our tool or else it just rattled inside of the head tube. Lots of rattling in the front end, but I suspect it's this thing. Take it out, we're gonna see if it goes away. Yep, rattling's gone. Something else we found was that accessing the tool itself was a pretty inconsistent affair. Sometimes it was really difficult to get the tool out, other times not so much. We're huge fans of integrated tool systems, but right now it doesn't seem like the bits is quite as dialed as some of the other brands. The RockShox Zeb is everything they say it is. Buttery smooth, bump eating, composed and supportive in the mid-stroke to keep the bike lively. I was very apprehensive about Trek's proprietary Super Deluxe, but after all our riding, apprehension has given way to acceptance. The compression tuning options are noticeable and improve the Slash's ride qualities for the given terrain. Time will tell how the system holds up for the long term. Our Trek Slash 9.9 XL1 retails for $8,000. For that price, we have to call out the GX cassette. Yeah, every part on this bike is top notch, but so is every other part on a bike in this price range, including the cassette. Bontrager's Line 30 carbon wheels are stiff and roll amazingly fast. On the Remedy and rail, we subjected the Line 30 to copious amounts of abuse. The Line 30 on our Slash did not fare as well, suffering a crack that had it no longer holding air. While an outlier, we were still disappointed in a wheel that we've grown to trust. All right, Trek Slash, where does this leave us? You aren't perfect, but your flaws are fleeting and easily remedied. When it comes down to what matters, the bones that make you what you are, therein lies the magic. The details are sound, the climbs are easily tackled, and at the bottom of the hill, it is all smiles. This bike had us reconsidering what a long travel 29er should be. The Trek Slash isn't a good bike. It's a great bike. Yoo! Are you one of the early buyers of the Trek Slash? We wanna hear from you. Make sure you leave a comment below. For the full review, including the specs and geometry on the all new Trek Slash, go to vitalmtb.com. For more content like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. And until next time, we'll see you on the trails.